Star Team Gambia. And you are watching the Obama Show. First of all, we will be giving the floor to Mr. Salum Sane, the president of Adetzi Genshore. And then we will be giving the floor also to Gambian Teacher Association President, Mrs. Jaite, and Guinea English language teachers of Guinea Bissau, Mr. Bayo. And then we will be giving the floor to Mr. Nyan, the president of Atas. There is no, but before there is no, after we will give the floor to the CPI, and then we will finish by giving the floor to the Rilo and the and the ER. Now, without any delay, we can give the floor to Mr. Sane, the president of Artists de Genshore. I would like an applause. You clap in your hand for him because they did a great job for us. So they... Uh, good morning, everyone. Dear the representative of the academy, Mr. Siaka Gujabi, Dear the representative of the RILO, dear the president of the national organization of the English teachers, that is ATES, dear the president of the national organization of teachers, of English teachers of the Gambia, dear the president of the national organization of the teacher's advisor, which is Ms. Njai, dear assistant, dear the invited. I am very glad to host this event here in Zigenshaw. And for all the teachers of Zigenshaw, of the Academy of this region, I would like to thank you all for your presence. I would like to say you our gratitude for coming to Zigenshore. For some of you, despite the difficulties of the journey, despite the difficulties of the organization. So Things are here. We are here for the event at last. And thanks God, we wish that we finish this activity in a very uh, successful, in success, what I would say. So I will invite you all to sharing. I will invite you all to giving hands to what we have, or who have been taking part, I would say, from the beginning of uh, the selections at the local levels until this uh, stage where we are today. Congratulations for you, good courage and determination again. For the teachers also, I would invite them to continue doing this. Thank you for all. Speech d'aujourd'hui qui, qui s'est déplacé de Dakar. Il nous a facilité beaucoup de choses. Monsieur Mokumba, soyez remercié. Des remerciements aussi à l'endroit de l'assistance, pour tout ce qui est là. Vous avez vraiment peiné pour être là. Vous vous êtes battu du niveau de votre école jusqu'à venir vous représenter toute une région ici aujourd'hui. Donc, soyez-en remerciés. Et vous pouvez vous applaudir pour vous-même, parce que vous le méritez. Merci beaucoup. Alors, Monsieur Lia, euh, Monsieur Sané, dans son discours, a remercié les délégations. Il a aussi encouragé les élèves qui, se sont, qui ont compété du niveau local jusqu'au niveau régional pour venir représenter leur région à ces différentes compétitions, à ces, à ces différentes compétitions qui vont se dérouler aujourd'hui. Il a aussi adressé des remerciements euh, aux délégations gambiennes et bissau guinéennes Alors, sans plus tarder, nous allons passer la parole. We will give the floor to Mrs. Gaïté the president of Gambian. The RILO, Artist National President, the president of Elta Guinea-Bissau and team, and not forgetting the team from the Gambia, I greet you all. On behalf of the team from the Gambia, I wish to express my sincere and heartfelt gratitude
to be invited in this English Club Convention, a convention that will go a long way in shaping the participants into active citizens, thus the team making English Club Community Service a platform to shape active citizenship. This will go a long way in enabling the learners to explore, to learn English in a more relaxed and friendly atmosphere. And I think ATES have done that for us because there cannot be no relaxed and a friendly atmosphere of this nature. So we thank them for inviting us and then not only limiting their invitation within the, the country, but they have gone beyond to inviting the Gambia and Guinea-Bissau. So we thank them very much because they have really expanded their network. And then to the participants, my speech is going to be very brief. I will want us all to know that we are here to learn English and, and then to socialize and know each other's culture. So we should make best use of the opportunity, explore, have fun, and then learn from it. Thank you so much. Je pense de la langue anglaise. Euh, L'autorité étant ici, c'est pour cela qu'on doit faire ces sept gymnastiques. Alors, M. Lia, euh, l'objet de notre English Club Convention aujourd'hui est un thème qui s'articule autour de la citoyenneté. Faire des clubs d'anglais une plateforme communautaire pour un engagement actif de nos élèves. C'est ça le thème de notre English Club Convention aujourd'hui. Um, dear Mr. President of Artes Senegal, dear Artes Jiginjor, dear um, Ruelo, dear uh, Inspector Academy. Academy. Okay, thank you. Uh, dear students, teachers, ladies, and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank Artes and the President for this great opportunity they gave us to come and attend this major event here in Jiginjor, from which our students will get some experience and they will be able to exchange ideas once our English club is a newly one. So I'm very happy with you and I hope that our relationship will take a long time. But to end my speech, I would very much like to thank Relo for the great contribution they have been given to Guinea Bissau English teachers. And I, ho I also hope that this contribution will continue for a long time. Thank you very much. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Bayo. Dear Inspector of Academics of Jigenshore, dear Rilo representative of Dwe Trainer, teacher trainer of Jigenshore, Dear Madam President of Jalto from the Gambia, dear President of uh, Elto from Guinea-Bissau, dear President of Artes Jigenshaw, ladies and gentlemen, head of regional delegations, dear participants, according to your titles and positions, I would like on behalf of Artes Board to express my gratitude to, partic to participants for honoring us with their presence. I will seize this opportunity to welcome to Senegal our guests from the Gambia and Guinea-Bissau. I would like to thank the Inspector of Academics of Jigenshore for accepting to preside over the opening of the seventh edition of the National Convention of English club commonly called National Students' Day, which ATES organizes in partnership with the RILO of the U.S. Embassy in Senegal. This edition made special 
by the participation of our two neighboring countries, the republics of the Gambia and Guinea-Bissau, is one more step to sub-regional integration. Such an event further promotes cultural mixing among peoples and cultivates the spirit of peace between nations. The theme of this year, making English club community service platforms for active citizenship. This theme is not meaningless, as building our students' capacity on volunteerism and community service put us in line with the recommendation of the National Law on Education, which aims to create school education, the citizen model fit to serve their nation. This event aims to encourage our students to love English more, promote excellence, and social, sociocultural exchanges amongst people from different backgrounds. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to take this opportunity to offer Durillo my heartfelt thanks for his invaluable and unfailing support. Thank you, Mr. Bell. I also thank sensorily Jigensho's team for the warm welcome we received. It's clear that many efforts have been made for the success of this day. Please allow me, Mr. Inspector, to thank all delegation participating in this activity by wishing them a safe journey. Je vais un peu tordre le protocole, faire un petit résumé de tout ce que j'ai dit en anglais pour l'inspecteur, parce que d'habitude, nos activités nos protocoles, pendant nos activités, les protocoles se font en anglais. Mais aujourd'hui, il y a une particularité. Nous avons euh, les représentants des républiques sœurs de Gambie et de Guinée-Bissau. Il y a aussi le RILO. C'est pourquoi on a voulu faire le discours en anglais. Mais permettez-moi au moins de faire un résumé euh, du discours à M. Le, à monsieur le, à monsieur Lia. Monsieur l'inspecteur d'académie, Monsieur le Rilo, Monsieur le directeur de Global Citizen Year, Madame la présidente de l'association des professeurs d'anglais de Gambie, Monsieur le président de l'association des professeurs d'anglais de Guinée-Bissau, Monsieur le président de la branche régionale de la. Which is usually different from the formal classroom setting, meaning between the four walls where the students really um, uh, feel at ease because the atmosphere is, is relaxed, they deal with their friends. Um, so it's a good, really, um, uh, way for them to develop their speaking skills, right? And then I would like to uh, focus also on the fact that um, our activities, classroom activities, should not be restricted to language acquisition, but we should also um, try to shape another citizen that is helpful to their countries. So hence the relevance of, of uh, today's topic. And uh, uh, I would like also um, to thank really Artist National President, Mr. Nyan, because ever since he's at the head of this association, really he's working towards extending activities to other regions, which, which are really very far. And then for that, I think we uh, should really uh, thank Mr. Nyan very much because last week uh, they were in Urosogi, which is really very far away from Dakar. So uh, I think Mr. Nyan really deserves special thanks. And then I would also like to extend my thanks to uh, Mr. Siaka Gujabi, the inspector of academy, the Ganeshot inspector of academy, because also he's really... Um, very open, and then uh, he's really helping teachers, and then he's, well, he participates, he usually takes parts in activities that are held here in Zigensha. So uh, not to be long, really, uh, we'll, on behalf of all teachers, I would like to say thank you to all of you for being here today. Thank you very much. Because our schedule, we have been, we have been accused some delay, and for that time, we are gonna give the floor to the real Mr. Bill, you have Good morning. 
Okay. You guys are going to do some speaking today, so I want you to get a little bit warmed up with it. Um, first of all, I, I want to say I'm very honored to sit at the table with my esteemed guests uh, from around Senegal, but also internationally from the Gambia and from Guinea-Bissau. Um, as you may have guessed, I am the regional English language officer, and I am pleased to represent the United States Embassy here at this event. I'm also pleased as a regional officer to be at an event that is truly regional. We have representatives from not only Senegal, my base country, but also Guinea-Bissau and the Gambia. In my work, I represent 18 West African countries. And so one of my hopes is that English is not only uh, popular and successful in individual countries, but also it serves, as some of my colleagues have mentioned, as a bridge, a regional bridge to where you have more understanding, more peace, more prosperity among West African countries. Obviously, this is a partnership with uh, the United States and our individual countries, but we want it to be a regional partnership and eventually a pan-African and a global partnership. Now, I have only been in Senegal for um, eight months, basically since August of last year. And when I arrived, many people talked about English clubs. English clubs, English clubs. It's like, what is that, right? English clubs are really um, an African phenomenon, right? Uh, I previously served in Indonesia, and in Southeast Asia, we don't have English clubs, right? Uh, my colleagues who are in South America and Eastern Europe, they don't have English clubs. So I'm very happy to be here to experience this event. Another reason is that, at heart, I am an English teacher. Before I worked for the US Embassy, I taught English for 20 years. So it does my heart very good to see so many committed teachers, committed administrators, and most of all, committed students who, as pointed out, learn English in class, but then also learn English in a different format so they can participate not only in a more informal way, but a more active way. English can be used, as we see, as not only a tool for academic school, uh, skills, but also as community service. And as we teachers know, we work for our students today in our class, but we also work for our students' future. And I think that is exactly what the English Club does. It is a grassroots organization that brings together students from around the community, around the country, and now around the region to not only practice English, not only develop academic skills, but also to really tackle issues that affect your community and communities around the region. So I'm very excited to be here. I want to congratulate all of you who uh, have made it through the English uh, challenge, but also I've heard some of the stories of your travel here. So congratulations for making that as well. And uh, I look forward to a very enjoyable day and, and uh, Again, thank you for having me be here. So. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Moderateur. Monsieur le Représentant de l'Ambassadeur des États-Unis au Sénégal, Chef du Bureau d'Anglais à l'Ambassade des États-Unis au Sénégal, Monsieur le Président de l'Association nationale des professeurs d'anglais, Monsieur le Président de l'Association nationale des professeurs, professeurs d'anglais de Gambie, Madame Guité, 
monsieur le formateur en anglais, monsieur le responsable régional de l'association des professeurs d'anglais à Ziguinchor, mesdames, messieurs les responsables chefs de délégation que naîtront le progrès et la prospérité. Je voudrais vous témoigner de notre engagement à vous soutenir au plan institutionnel. Le thème de cette septième édition de la Convention nationale des élèves de l'Association des professeurs d'anglais est d'autant plus important qu'il s'inscrit dans la formation civique et citoyenne à travers le dynamisme et le bon fonctionnement des clubs d'anglais qui sont avant tout des cadres d'auto-formation, mais aussi des cadres d'imprégnation pour l'apprentissage de l'anglais. Je voudrais saluer également l'approche novatrice, faite de participation, euh, également faite d'inclusion et d'ouverture. Je voudrais, à mon nom propre, au nom de la communauté éducative de la région de Zéguinchor, mais surtout au nom du ministre de l'Éducation nationale, Momodou Tala, vous témoigner de toute notre gratitude. Decided to have some scarf for the people that I'm going to call here today. The one is very low. You can go and go, go, go up to the stage. Yes. Uh, the inspector of academy, Mr. Makumbo Ture, working with them for so many years. exams. Over the few years I have been student and teacher, I have learned that teachers, they have the power to not just shape leaders, but they also have the power to translate their students' vision and dreams into reality. And artists, teachers are no exception. Today, We are here on the occasion of the seventh edition of the English Club Convention. And as the secretary in charge of English clubs, I have the honor to be the moderator for a great man. Uh, some years ago, people used to call me just when I started um, being in English clubs, I got a few nicknames such as like uh, Obama, and recently I have been called the Obama Show, which is not, uh, well, obviously due to the TV show I have been hosting. Then when they ask me to do the moderator, you know, usually they give you the biography and then you have to read to know a few things about the person. Uh, but as a TV host, I have been transformed to a journalist. So instead of reading the biography, I admit I did not do it. I talked directly to the person, Makumba, who is here among us today. But what I did worked. I talked to him. And I could understand that teachers are not alone today. I understand that there are people out there who are not in classes There are teachers, people out there who are not designing lesson plans for the students, but who care about what we do as teachers. I could understand that through the speech of Makumba when I just talked to him a minute ago. He is such a willing people who is ready to be there anytime teachers need, anytime citizens need. Because he's so inspiring that he told me whensoever he has the opportunity to inspire people, 
he will not hesitate. They say, great minds discuss ideas. Small mind discuss event. Average mind discuss people and very small minds discuss themselves. And today we have the privilege and the honor to have a great mind, Mr. Makuma Trey on stage. Welcome on the seven editions of the English Club Convention. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, my name is Makumba Touré. Um, I represent an American NGO called Global Citizen Year. Um, it is a gap year program, um, and uh, I am very thankful for, to ATES uh, for the opportunity to talk about the work I do and love. Um, and um, in my work, uh, I am mostly involved with young um, international, and by that I mean non senegal Stop me if you don't understand or if you have questions, okay? Thank you. All right, so Global Citizen Europe, what I want to do today, if this lets me. All right, so what am I doing here? What do I want to talk um, to you guys about today? I want to tell you about Global Citizen Europe. Why do we do what we do? Um, give you details about our organization. Um, talk a little bit about our results and then talk about global citizenship and volunteer and global citizen year. There are a few things that, um, that we want, that we're working towards. So those are our objectives. If we dream, like these are the things we, we dream about, right? Uh, we want eventually college admissions to say, before you go to college or before you go to university, you have to take a gap year. So a gap year is the time between you graduating from high school, so in Senegal that would be baccalaureate, and then going on to university, that time, okay? Um, number two is that uh, we want employers, so people who hire you for a job, to ask you, what did you do after high school? Did you go straight to university or did you do something in between? Hopefully they will want everybody to have done something in between, and I'll explain why later. Um, and then we want governments to think part of the education or part of what is important in educating our young people is to make sure that before they go to college or to university, they do something. They do something different, right? Um, and then we really want this, this, this badge, uh, Global Citizen, to be a badge of honor. Uh, the same way we have Fulbright, um, how do you call it, students or teachers, etc to talk about global citizen, global citizen, about global citizen year as being a badge of honor. So what we've seen um, is that um, young men and women who travel after high school come out of the experience different and they have, a, their experience has a very big impact on what they do in university and in college. Um, this is uh, the Dean of Stanford, Stanford is a, it is a big university in California, and he says, the kids that come back from a year off are often wiser, they're more mature, and have a different perspective than those who have gone straight to college. So why are we here? So I guess it's quite obvious to see Senegalese people are very much into politics and etc. So these are things I'm, I'm sure you guys can all relate to. The greatest challenges facing humanity, poverty, pandemics, so uh, disease, climate change and global, are global in nature. And yet, we're failing to equip young people for leadership in our interconnected world. What this means is that you guys are going to school, right? You go to school every day from eight to five. You do a lot of things. But how much of what you do actually has to do with what's happening in the world? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you do, I don't know, you, you take physics classes, biology, English. English is always good because that actually allows you to connect with other people, right? But of all the things that you do, how much of it has to do with what happens around you, okay? Um, number two is that what we see is that for students who actually go through college, most of them are not prepared for the world they encounter. So you go to school, you get good grades, 
you do baccalaureate, series, whatever it is these days, S, or I don't know, and you, you, you're brilliant, then at that point, you have to find a job. Is it easy to find a job? How easy it is? Right? Whether or not you have, bac if you have baccalaureate, it's maybe slightly easier, I'm sorry, to go to college, right? And then after college, we all know of people who have very good grades, were brilliant in university, but couldn't get a job, right? So there's something that's going on. Like, why can't you get a good job if you don't have a good education? There's a problem there, right? Um, and then part of that problem is that um, there's a lack of global perspective and skills in what you do in school. So the things that they teach you in school are great, but is it enough to make sure that you can function in the real world, right? And then the last point, which is not really as relevant here, is that there's a, there's a, it's a big thing in the West to, you know, to take a gap year. So people who can afford it after high school, before they go to college, they take a year and they travel abroad. You know, they study a language, they visit a place, etc. But we feel like the, that industry, the, the system that is set up right now, doesn't really prepare those kids for the future, right? So what are we doing in Global Citizen Year? In Global Citizen Year, we say, you want to do a gap year, that's great. Let's make it meaningful. Like, learn something out of it. Don't just go out and have fun or do this and that. Make sure that what you do is going to help you in the future, right? And so what we do is that we um, identify potential great leaders for the future, right? And uh, we, we have a very hard selection process. Um, I know that last year, for example, we took one of every seven young men and women that applied. So it's actually, it's very hard to get in, right? And uh, we make sure that we don't, um, that financial issues are not a barrier to the experience, right? So if you can't afford the, um, the, the global citizen year, we'll find a way to, we'll, we'll give you financial help, basically, okay? Through sponsors, um, we do fundraising, et cetera, right? And then what we do is that we um, so take those kids and we bring them to our countries, so to Senegal, India, Brazil, and Ecuador, where they spend seven months. And when they come to our countries, they, they live in a host family, right? And they have an apprenticeship. And by the way, this is actually how I know about Ates and how Ates knows about me, is because he was talking about English clubs. English clubs are a great resource for apprenticeship. A lot of our fellows work with English clubs. Um, I had a wonderful video I wanted to show you about this, but unfortunately, technology is not um, helping today, but anyways. So they, have a, they live in a host family and they have an apprenticeship and they live in the culture, they learn a new language, etc. Okay, um, I'm gonna step through this. Okay, so what have we done so far? So this is since uh, 2010 and this is up until, so well, how do you do this? So you get young men and women, they come to, our, to your countries or to our countries, they live in a host family, they have an apprenticeship, then what? You know, how do you do this? So we actually have outcomes. There are things that we, we focus on, right? And so we have a curriculum, we have training seminars, and we focus on these things. And there are three things we feel are very important for young, to develop young leaders. Number one, in the health codes. So her idea was that when the women came in in, in the morning uh, for visits, um, she would take care of their kids. So she put together healthcare, she had toys, decorations, etc., and she would play with the kids while the mothers were seeing the doctor. Um, we have uh, e Jang Radio, which is very nice. Four of our fellows in chess put together a website um, and they affiliated that website to, uh, to a local radio in chess, where what they do is they have a platform for English learning, where everybody can go in, contribute material, etc., cetera, um, to learn things. Um, and the, the, the reason why we do this is that we realize that the best way to learn about a country and its, and its challenges is to actually put yourself in a, in a place where you can actually see what's happening in the country. 
right? If you work in a school and you talk to the teacher, you talk to the students, you go through a couple of strikes, etc., you have a much better understanding of the place you are and their challenges that if you are in the classroom, you know, in front of a computer doing, you know, internet research, you know, education challenges in Senegal, right? So really that's the, the idea. So two is the apprentice, and number three is the connection, right? We make sure that our fellows produce things. So um, we ask them to write blogs, we ask them to make videos, and we ask them, we make sure that they communicate their experience with the outside world, right?